Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast, but you're just unsure as to where to start? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to get a podcast up and running and sounding great for free. Also, stick around to the end because I'm going to showcase more than just the free option. I'm going to take you through some more affordable options as well as some extra toys to get you a really high quality sounding production. Now, in today's video, I'm going to be specifically talking about my setup. That doesn't mean that you have to have everything that I have to have a great sounding podcast. One of the first things that you need to do before you ever hit record is you need to research. What is it that you want to talk about? What are you passionate about? And what do you want to share with an audience? So in order to give you a best foot forward right off the bat, remember that whatever it is that you're going to talk about, you need to have some kind of a form to it whether it's a bullet point system or you have your notes completely wrote out, whatever feels best to you, just make sure that you have some kind of a direction to go with so that you're not just kind of talking randomly. If you have to read your notes line for line, then at least practice reading those notes with proper inflection to make it sound less robotic. Now, one tip that can simplify that process and allow you to sound more natural and feel like you're more at home in front of a microphone is to actually take a picture of your family or one of your friends and to tape it up onto the screen as you're recording. This will greatly improve your ability to feel as if you're actually connecting with a person one-on-one. -on -one. Or even better, if you can invite on a co-host, someone that you can have open dialogue with, then you'll sound even more natural because you'll naturally be speaking to someone. Okay, so you have your idea, you have your bullet point list to keep you on track, and now you have a co-host, or at least the, a picture of a friend taped up to the screen to keep you on track. So now what do you do with all this information? How do you get this passionate message inside of you to share it with the rest of the world online? One very underrated piece of gear that you own right now for recording great audio for your podcast is actually in your pocket, a cell phone. The Voice Memo app that's found on the iPhone is phenomenal at recording voice. You can take this even a step farther, and with just a minimal amount of investment, you can get yourself a lavalier mic. These lavalier mics come in at very affordable prices nowadays, and they can get some great sound quality on the cheap. Okay, great. Now you have an audio file that contains your bullet point list. You've listened back to it to make sure that there's no pops or clicks or weird background noises that happen, and you're doing your best to make sure that it sounds the best that you can get it. So now what do you do with that audio file? Most every smartphone has the ability to take the audio files that you've recorded onto the smartphone and to drag and drop them or import them onto your desktop. That's the next step that you'll need to take in this process. Now you need to take that audio file that you've imported onto your desktop and you need to put it into an audio editing program or a DAW, also known as a digital audio workstation. If you're just starting out, you've never used a DAW before, I would recommend starting out with Audacity. Now, if you know your way around a digital audio workstation already, you've done some audio editing in the past, or you at least want to see yourself scale up later and have those more robust features at your fingertips, I would definitely recommend Cakewalk by BandLab, as it is the most robust DAW on the market for free. If you think Cakewalk by BandLab sounds like a good idea to you, then I also have an entire playlist here on my channel that will help you get started. Everything from installing it all the way up to using it to mix and to master later. Okay, so now using the Voice Memo app on my iPhone and the free DAW Audacity, I'm going to showcase what you can do with these two free powerful tools to get your podcast up and running and sounding great. Okay, so before I hit record, I want to share a couple of quick tips to get you started so that you'll have the best audio in post that you possibly can. Try to minimize distractions, move yourself to a room in the house that doesn't have a lot of noise and doesn't contain a lot of reverberations or reflections from off the walls. Now, there are ways to minimize reflections and reverberations from a recording. For instance, you could move to a smaller room, you could move into a closet that's full of clothes, or hang up sheets around the area where that you'll be recording. You could even sit next to a window with drapery. All of these little things are actually going to help to provide a better recording in post. Okay, so after I hit the record button on my voice memo app, I want to leave about five seconds of complete silence and I'm going to leave five seconds of complete silence after my initial intro. What this is going to do is allow me to move that intro in a place that would seem more cohesive to the music that I might put in later. Also, this is going to allow me to clean up the audio in post, as we'll soon see in Audacity. So let's get started by recording the intro to our example podcast.
This is the first episode of the Worship Guitar Podcast. In today's first episode, we're going to discuss five guitar pedals that will help you get great sounding worship sets. Great, so now I've got my first snippet of audio. Let's go ahead and move it to the desktop and I'll show you what we can do with this. All right, so now we've moved to the desktop and I'm gonna be syncing my iPhone so that I can get the audio file that we just recorded in the Voice Memo app onto the desktop. Okay, so now that my phone is completely synced, I'm gonna take the voice recording that we just made and simply click and drag this to the desktop. The next step is to download Audacity. Simply click Audacity in Google search bar and the first option that comes up is the safe one. All right, from here, make sure that you download the latest version of Audacity and that will be found right here. Now, as you can see, there's several options. There's options for Windows, Mac, and Linux. We're gonna go ahead and download the Windows version. All right, once Audacity is downloaded and installed, you simply open it up, take the audio file that we've just moved off of our phone, and click and drag it into this panel right here. As you can see, it automatically imports it into Audacity as an audio file. Let's make this bigger so it'll be easier to see. Now this is where the first five seconds of dead space that we left in there is gonna help us to get some great sounding audio. So let's take a listen to it as it stands. This is the first episode of the Worship Guitar Podcast. So that doesn't sound bad in and of itself. This room isn't very noisy. However, we can make it sound even better. First, let's highlight this portion here where nothing is going on, that dead space that we left in there. Go up to Effect and Noise Reduction. From here, we're gonna click Get Noise Profile. Now, if we click over in the side panel right here, this is gonna select all of the audio on that track. Go back to Effect and Noise Reduction again. Now, simply hit OK. Now, the other way that we could do that is simply go back to Effect and highlight Repeat Noise Reduction or Control R. You'll notice now that the beginning and the ending got significantly quieter per the waveform. Let's take a listen now. This is the first episode of the Worship Guitar Podcast. In today's first episode, we're going to discuss five guitar pedals that will help you get great sounding worship sets. Now, as you can see, all of the ambient background noise that was there before is now gone. Let's do a before and after so you can hear exactly what this is doing. So this is before. And this is after. Now that's a pretty dramatic difference. And the great thing about this effect is it doesn't only affect the problematic areas, but it removes that hiss and that background noise from the entire portion of audio. Now, one word of wisdom for this particular effect is to not overdo these settings that are found within this plugin. In fact, the stock settings that it loads up with are usually just fine for most cases. Now, if it's a horrible case and you still need a little bit of noise reduction, you can always just apply this same effect twice by simply going back to the top and hitting repeat noise reduction again. All right, so now that we have the background noise removed and it sounded really good, let's go ahead and normalize the audio to make it a more consistent volume level. So simply click on this again, Effect, and Normalize. From here, it's gonna ask you how loud that you want your audio to be. Negative three dBs is usually a great starting place, and it's sort of the industry standard anyway for loudness. So let's go with that. This is the first episode of the Worship Guitar Podcast. In today's first episode, we're going to discuss five guitar pedals that will help you get great sounding worship sets. All right, so this is definitely sounding a lot better now. The background noise is no longer distracting me from what the individual is saying. The volume level is a little more consistent. The only thing that I'm hearing now that's kind of ear piercing are those sibilants or the S sounds, and we can actually deal with those with an EQ. Now to address the sibilant issues, I'm going to insert an instance of the graphic EQ plugin that's found within Audacity. The first thing I'm going to do is remove this first portion of this audio now that I no longer need it. Okay, I'm going to select the entirety of the audio, go to Effect, Graphic EQ, and from here I'm going to address those sibilant frequencies. Now, typically speaking, those are found anywhere from 2000 kilohertz and above. 
I know that for my particular voice, around 6,000 kilohertz is usually where I find them. So I'm gonna go to this last slider right here, which is 6.3 kilohertz, and dip it down about eight dBs. Now I'm gonna hit preview, and that will allow me to know if I've helped or hindered this audio. This is the first episode of the Worship Guitar Podcast. In today's first episode, we're going to... To my ears, that sounds a whole lot better. No longer are those S's making my ears bleed. Okay, so last and certainly not least, we're going to apply a limiter now to all of this audio. What this is going to do is bring all of the volume levels up to industry standards, which is typically speaking negative one dBs from clipping. So what this is going to do is it's going to ensure that if my podcast is listened alongside of another podcast that may be professionally recorded, there won't be a dramatic drop in volume causing the listener to wonder what just happened. Just like before, we're going to select the entire portion of audio, go up to effect and limiter. From here, we're just going to leave the stock settings and we're going to make sure that this is limited to negative one dBs. Now that that is set appropriately, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. This audio is now at a point to where we could import it into another session or even drop some music behind it to give it more of a podcast feel. Let's put some intro music behind this. Now I'm going to select the music that I want to import for my intro. This is the first episode of the Worship Guitar Podcast. In today's first episode... Okay, so I'm going to play around with the audio now until I get it to a portion where I feel like would make a good intro spot. I think this portion right here sounds pretty good. This is the first episode of the Worship Guitar... I'm going to delete this section by highlighting and then hit the delete button. Now I'm going to highlight this portion from here to here. I'm going to go up here to effect and fade in. Let's listen to how that sounds. This is the first episode of the Worship Guitar Podcast. In okay, it's a little bit overpowering on the vocals. I'm going to turn it down by about 8 dBs. Let's see if that sounds any better now. This is the first episode of the Worship Guitar Podcast. In today's first episode, we're going to discuss five guitar pedals that will help you get great sounding worship sets. Okay, so now that I have my intro, I can go ahead and delete this area that I don't need anymore. Okay, so now I'm gonna delete the back half of this, and I'm gonna cause this all right here, starting from here, to fade out using the fade out option. Let's listen to what this sounds like now. This is the first episode of the Worship Guitar Podcast. In today's first episode, we're going to discuss five guitar pedals that will help you get great sounding worship sets. Okay, so now we've just created an intro for our podcast. Now that my audio has been recorded, I can choose to do this in one of two different ways. I can either export the entire portion of audio as a mix, in other words, these will both be folded down together, or I can export them as a multiple, which will export the music aside from the vocal, which could actually be more helpful if I plan on using another program later and possibly moving things around within the project. I'll show you how to do that now. If I go up to File and Export, and I select Wave, I'm going to move this to my desktop as 1. Now it's going to tell me that my tracks will be mixed down and exported as one stereo file, which might be okay in some instances. However, what if I wanted to separate that out so that I would have my music separate from my intro? That's simple. I can simply go up to File, Export, Export Multiple. Now it's going to ask me for some different information. I'm going to select Tracks and choose Export. It's going to place these in a folder. Now, as of right now, that folder doesn't exist, so I'm going to have it create that folder. All right, it's now told me that the files have been successfully exported. So now when I go to the desktop, I have two different options here. I have the WAVE form, which is the mixed down version, all one file, or I can go into new folder where I have the two files split up. One of them is my intro music, and one of them is my dialogue. So far, we've used a free audio app and a free audio editing program that we've downloaded from the internet to get a great sounding intro to a podcast. Let's look at some various options now that we could invest back into this podcast to make it sound even more professional. 
If you head over to the homestudiosimplified.com website, I have underneath the studio gear tab an entire comprehensive list of things that you could use to really up your game when it comes to the podcast. But any one of these microphones would be a great choice. I've tried every one of them and I can definitely recommend them. Scrolling down farther on the page, you'll find a list of interfaces that I recommend. An interface is a go-between from your microphone to the computer, a way to get your microphone to actually record onto your computer. So you'll definitely need that if you're going to up your game and get a professional microphone. Next, I have a list of headphones that I've personally tried and would definitely recommend, and also some speakers if you should so desire those. Earlier, I spoke of moving to a different room of the house or another space entirely if you had to deal with reverberations or echoes. This is vitally important because even the tool that I just showed you in Audacity will not be able to remove those effectively and make it sound as good as what it could. Now, if you cannot move from that space, another solution is to hang up some sort of sound absorption foam like this. This doesn't have to be permanent. You can actually use command strips or Velcro strips if you're renting or leasing your property, and just a little bit of treatment is going to go a long way to helping you to get a lot better recording. Although Audacity is a very powerful program for audio editing, it still lacks a lot of user friendliness as well as some of the key features that I feel like are a necessity to make a great sounding podcast. Therefore, if you want to kick your game up a notch, go ahead and download Cakewalk by BandLab. This is one of the most robust free DAWs on the market. As already stated, if you go to my YouTube channel under the playlist tab, I also have a playlist that's completely full of nothing but Cakewalk by BandLab tutorials. Everything from installing Cakewalk all the way up to using some of its key features. All right, now I'm going to showcase for you what a typical podcast would look like for me within Cakewalk by BandLab. Now, yet again, I've created this so that you would have all kinds of different alternative options so you don't have to use exactly what I'm using. This is just my particular workflow. Now, if there are products that I'm using that you would like to use in your own workflow, I will include a link in the description of this video to everything that I use. All right, so let's get started. One of the first things that I do is I make sure that my notes are in order. I use Evernote simply because if I update something on my phone or on my desktop, they will reflect in both places simultaneously. On this note, you can see that I have my episode number and my episode title, just in case I forget. And I also have a long list of talking points that I want to cover in this particular podcast. Moving back to Cakewalk by BandLab, this is a template that I've created for a podcast. So every time I want to record a podcast, all of these things automatically come up for me and I don't have to continually be plugging away and doing things that just take more time. So as you can see, I also even have a marker set here that allows me to know what time to come in to create continuity between one podcast and the next. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm simply going to arm my dialogue track for recording and make sure that I do have audio passing through. Okay, so with my audio levels adjusted properly and all of my notes in order and just a few minor tweaks to the outboard gear here to get things sounding like I would like them to sound in my headphones, I'm ready to actually hit record and record the intro now to this podcast. So let's do that. You are listening to, listening listening to the Home Studio Simplified the Home Studio Simplified Podcast. Welcome back to the Home Studio Simplified Podcast. This is episode number 50. Today's topic is the creative's worst enemy. Welcome back, my fellow Fader Finaglers. Today, we're going to be talking about some amazing submissions that we've had in the Quarantine Song Challenge. Now, there has been a ton of talent represented, and due to time availability in the... So here's the signal flow for this particular setup. It's really quite simple, actually. I'm going from the Shure SM7B. Now, this microphone is predominantly known as a gain-hungry microphone. So you have to do something to boost that gain. In this case, I'm using the Cathedral Pipes Durham to give it 24 dBs of clean gain. Now, the only way that the Cathedral Pipes will actually work is if it has a phantom power source to give it that extra boost. So therefore, I'm running back into the DBX286S here this is a mic preamp and processor. So I'm going through the mic preamp section using the phantom power, going straight into the compressor section of this, which I'm only typically getting about 3 dBs of compression. From there, I'm going into a de then into the enhancer, then into an expander slash gate, which just takes away a lot of that unwanted background noise and some of the lip smacking and breath noise that sometimes you get from podcasting. And then, of course, there's the output gain. So from here, I'm coming back into the Behringer Dual Flex 2. This is a spectral enhancer. Basically, it just 
um, sort of ex excites the low and high frequencies based off of how you set these knobs. And it gives you really like sort of a radio ready type sound, that radio voice that you're looking for in a podcast. And then lastly, it's coming back into the Virtualizer 3D by Behringer. And on this, all I'm simply doing is just using the dynamics effect and using a noise gate. And that's just to furthermore clean up anything that might be uh, just coming in from the background. So generally speaking, when I record the dialogue for the podcast, having gone through this sort of a chain, there's really not much editing that needs to be done other than just spacing. All right, so moving on from the preamp and effects section, then the signal passes through the Focusrite 6i6 and then into Cakewalk by BandLab. All right, now having my podcast completely recorded, I'm ready to export it and to upload it to an online aggregator or basically a service who will then push it out to all of the various sources that it needs to go to, such as iTunes and my website. Let's go ahead and export the mix and I'll show you what that looks like on the backside. Now, although there are several different options online in order to upload your podcast to so it can push it out to the various streams, I chose Libsyn as it's the same one that I've always been with since I can remember when, and it's also very affordable. At $7 a month, you're able to upload 100 megabytes worth of data, and you also have access to all the stats, so you can see exactly how many downloads you have per episode. I hope this has been helpful, and I hope you found a lot of value out of this. If you did, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Remember to hit that like button. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so that every time I upload a new video, you'll be the first to know.